was out here molesting kids and stuff, and then <laughs> still, oh, give uncle a hug. People that have been so nice to subscribe, like, and share, let me tell you this. It is such a pleasurable feeling when you have beaten someone till you're completely satisfied. Welcome back to Matter of Opinions. It's your girl, Tess. It's your boy, Boom Blue. I know, we got to work on the intro. We say that all the time. Let's, let's just keep going. Okay. Welcome back, guys. Thank you for tuning in on another episode of Matter of Opinions. Um... So last week, Bam went off and he had to get something off his chest. And so now I got some stuff I want to get off my chest, you know? And that is why is it, and I'm I'm only speaking on black and Hispanic households because I only know about black and Hispanic. I only talk about what I know about <laughs> personally. Yeah, this shit gonna be good. Why is it that we insist on sweeping shit under the rug, right? Traumas, all types of things, right? So, and 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 then because of titles, you're supposed to just let it go because somebody holds a, a, a title and you're just supposed to move it and move on, like nothing happened and just let those traumas manifest in itself, right? So, okay, you do something that may be traumatic to a person, whether it is your intention or not is not the issue. The fact that this is what your actions have caused on your loved one, you need to own up, have the conversation so that you can get over it and get through it together. Not, oh, well, we're going to argue about it. I'm going to dismiss your feelings about it. I'm going to, you know, say it didn't happen that way, like gaslight you, all, all this stuff about it. Everything but own up to it and say, listen, it wasn't my intentions. I apologize that I made you feel that way. This is what I actually meant. Or, you know, maybe it was something that was just extremely traumatic. Again, own up to it. Let's talk about it, get through it. If we need to go to therapy, we can go to therapy. If if we can handle it by having the conversations among ourselves and moving on then that's what needs to happen. But not like, oh, okay, me and you, we just had hardcore beef yesterday, right? For example, we didn't. This didn't happen, guys. We didn't beef. But let's say we had this hardcore beef yesterday. I mean, we going at it. You did something that was very hurtful to me. And I'm telling you that it was hurtful. You're like, well, you know, acting like it's not your problem. Too bad, too sad, whatever, whatever. We don't speak. Now today, you're like, oh, hey, you want breakfast? Like, whoa, whoa. Slow down. We just... We just was fighting yesterday. Now we're talking about breakfast. We not gonna yeah. the, the 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 issue. We gotta we no. gotta we gotta talk about it. We gotta get through that. We don't. We do. Oh, yesterday's price is not today's price. But if you it's... don't handle the stuff from yesterday, you're dragging it into today and every day going forward. No, because if yesterday you didn't put hands on nobody, so it wasn't that important to carry on for the next day. Get if, over that shit. If you did not address it, it's still an open and you didn't close out the day. We did. That's you how the day, that's how the next day came. We didn't resolve it. And then you know what happens? Then this is what happens. Then okay, we pretend like yesterday didn't happen. Next week, something else come up, or next month, whatever it is, something else comes up. And then it's the same pattern of we bickering, but we're not getting to the bottom of it. We're not trying to hear each other. We're not arguing to listen and understand. We're arguing to just respond. You get what I'm saying? Not to to, to actually feel and try to empathize with the person and, and, and tr try to come to a resolution. So therefore now you don't got, now we have yesterday's incident. Now we got next week, next month incident. And it just keeps piling on as the years goes on. We have all of this unresolved issues and tension. And what then do you, what do you want to do? Literally sit and talk about it? In the moment when something is happening, it should be addressed. If you need no. time, if you need time to take space because it's something that's just too too emotional, too dramatic that you can't even have a conversation without somebody talking because it's so fresh. I can understand taking time to let things kind of settle a bit, but you need to resolve these issues. 
You need to resolve no. these issues. Absolutely. No. Because then, Absolutely. then then if we have, let's say every time we argued or whatever, I'm telling you like, hey, I don't feel like you respect me because the way you talk to me or the way you treat me and, and all those scenarios. And now you can't seem to understand why I feel the way I feel. And I'm like, but we have our history, all of the collective things that we didn't got into was because I felt you was disrespecting me. But now you're clueless and now you want examples and you want me to give you all 5, 10, 15, 20 years of examples. But if we had addressed it as they came along, it would be nothing to, to go and pull back from and we could have got things on track and not get to where we are today. You can't address everything. Some if shit you just got to keep on your way. We should absolutely be able to this address is, issues. This is, this is your generation bullshit. This is your generation bullshit. Our generation, we fought at one o'clock, three o'clock, we playing spades, four thirty, we drinking together. We are and never discussing what? that shit ever again. And we're and never, what? never gonna bring it back up. Your generation is full of addicts, alcoholics, and people with problems because y'all never dealt with oh, it. No, no, no. That's let's a low blow. Real. No, 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 no. Let's that's be, a low blow. Let's be real. Your generation has faced so much trauma, right? Let's be real. You guys were abused by the baby boomers, right? They tore y'all up. You are drawing blood. That's abuse. If you're using switches and pots and pans and all kinds of objects to, to knock your kid up the side, that's, that's abuse. That's, what it is. And that's why people go to jail. Absolutely. No, we ain't went to no damn jail. Who are you crazy? My grandmother, who is that's a baby boomer, served time for over disciplining her children. Yes. No, it was more to that. It was more to that. This was in the 70s yeah. and 80s. Come on now. It was more to that, man. You got your ass whooped in the 70s and 80s. You just got your ass whooped. Nah, it's nah. not the same. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna put traumas on you. All that I'm saying is this. Trauma. Your generation has a problem with discussing things, right? You guys wanna Thanks. act like things didn't happen. And move on, but then can't understand why you're 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 so angry or this person is this way, or you're bitter, or whatever the case may be. You're not resolving the issues, and that's the problem. And if you want to stay stuck on that, okay, that's cool for you. But then if I say, Hey, listen, you don't want to resolve issues when we bump heads, right? I respect it. So now I don't want to have anything to do with you because I shouldn't also have to be subjected to traumas and not resolve. Oh, see that's that's that your generation bullshit. It's not abuse, that. It it's not abuse. It's shit ha- emotional, psychological abuse. Absolutely. Shit happens. You get over it. You yes. have a little bit of something. How do you get over it if you don't if you don't deal with it? You move what we call the fuck on. What are that's you talking that's about? That's not moving on. That's putting a band aid over a wound that needs surgery. If you need surgery, putting a band aid on it is not going to do anything but kill you slow. You're, you're your, killing yourself, literally. That's Step your generation. Up. Your generation is soft. And y'all, your generation is a bunch of people that want to discuss issues and let's go on that thing that be. Okay. Okay. Therapy. okay. Therapy, therapy with big mama in the house coat. And she look at you while she chewing on some fat back. And she say, well, you know you're wrong. And that was it. With our, our situation, our, our generation, I promise you, if it bothered somebody that much, we ain't had no problem going to the backyard. We ain't had no problem going out there. And we hold on now, and we putting hands on each other. But I'm after we put hands about, on no, each other, no, 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 no. I'm not talking no, about sorry. talking about you and your friends. I'm talking about you and maybe your mom, your aunt, your uncle, somebody yeah. older than you, your elder. You're not going out into the yard fighting grandma because you ain't like what grandma said. I done put my hands on my uncle, and this wasn't even years ago. This was, yeah, you, you beat somebody down, and you keep it moving. But well, why would you? you why would you want to get physical with your elders? That's not respectful. No, I don't owe them nothing. I don't you owe them. You said, listen, you're contradicting yourself. It's either you're going to respect or you're not going to respect. I would rather have a conversation and resolve an issue with you then let things fester to the point where now I'm ready to put my hands on you. Before I allow it to get to that point, I will cut you out of my life like it, like you never existed. 
No, nah, that's childish. You that's not childish. Up. Fighting your that's uncle childish. is childish. That's childish. No. Nah, you nah. You can't nah. use your words. You're throwing a temper tantrum. The same thing use that you use kids for. That's some, the same that's thing some, your kid I'm I'm out out out. crying and whining. You want to slap them upside their head, but that's just what you did a week ago with your uncle. Our generation, our generation, we know how to deal with shit. But y'all we don't. Know. You fight your uncle. Put my hands on my elders. Never, never even thought about it. Never wanted to. Never, never. Man. Like I said, I will cut you out before nah. I put my hands nah. on you. I rather, I rather, I rather fight you for seven than eliminate you completely. But that makes no sense. It makes you're a lot of sense. Them. You're gonna fight them. them, and guess what's gonna happen? Because you don't want to get to the bottom of things, it's gonna keep happening. Every few years, you're gonna have to keep fighting and fighting nah. and fighting. Nah, cause you know what's gonna happen when that nigga get up? Cause I'm knocking him out. When he get up, he gonna be like, "Man, I ain't fuck with that nigga." Again. You know, you know. And you're gonna you're, do this with every relative that you have these confrontations with. I'll put now, my hands. I'll put my hands on anybody. I, I don't give a fuck. Shoot me the fear Ooh. one. We got some some stuff we Shit. get dig through. Shoot me the fear Shit. one. Shit, what? What you want to do? With, with, with or without gloves? What the hell? I ain't never used the last and I don't need to start now. Man, uh, you heard the mark, because I'm packing my bag, nigga. I'm on my You don't want this, you don't want this smoke. I'm telling you, yeah, you ain't grown enough for the smoke, best. I promise you that. This nigga done froze. I knew we were going to do that on the good joint. Hello? It's me. I was wondering after all the years. Is it still recording? Yeah, it looks like she's still recording. Thanks, saying recording. Let me see. Is it still recording? Yeah, it's still recording. I don't know what happened to the... Um... It's that raggedy ass Wi Fi y'all got. I mean, if you want the fair one, that's I can shoot you the fair one. But I mean, like, ain't nobody gonna jump in, though. Oh, I don't need nobody to jump in. You remember that for yourself. Yeah, ain't, ain't, ain't gonna be no jumping. It's just gonna be me and God. You know what I'm saying? And we get it popping. But I'm telling you right now, man, y'all generation, y'all generation is extremely soft. Okay. Like, y'all want to talk shit out and yep. go to therapy and do yeah, all of this and do all of that? We want to live longer. We don't want to be stressed out. Yeah, y'all stressed us out enough growing up. Y'all no, no. Enough growing up. Yes. Why do you it's... think so many people from my generation don't want nothing to do with their families once they get of age and can sit on their own? Because they're soft. Because y'all are toxic, traumatic. We're not toxic. non we people. There, there was things we were able to do at Nine and ten that y'all can't do at nineteen and twenty. Y'all soft. And and that's kinda our fault. You know how it's our fault? Because ask me how it's our fault. No, if you ask if you ask me how it's our fault, I'll I'll tell you. I swear to God. You ain't gotta ask me, I'm gonna tell you anyway. I was gonna say it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. I ain't gonna ask. What happened was we thought we were being raised up hard and difficult and you know like there was a better way. So what we did was we promised ourselves that our children was never going to have to endure what we endured, right? Not knowing that it was building strength and character in us. That's why majority of y'all generation don't have no character. Y'all, y'all look at your generation. Your generation walks around with their pants hanging half off their ass, right? Not only half off their ass around the peers, they get around your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother with their pants off their ass, right? They walk in the middle of a fucking mall. Your generation walking in malls, shooting it up, walking in schools, shooting um, it up. We get old. I think you you got us. I'm I'm a millennial. Um, I yeah, think that's your generation. With the, with the your generation. generation. And stuff. Your, generation, not, your generation did all of that shit. Your generation did all that shooting up schools and shooting up malls and shit. That's your generation. Our generation didn't even think of that goofy shit. 
And I'm you know what I'm saying? I started it, but continue. I, actually, we did not. Yeah, y'all actually did. did. We actually did not. I mean, you go ahead, go ahead, Des. Look on the side, and you see that mass shootings and all of that. All of them people are your age. Your age. Your That's age. y'all. Come. They, they are walking in malls and shooting up the damn mall. Walking in goddamn schools, shooting up the damn schools, shooting up twenty five damn kids. That ain't got nothing to do. We ain't never been no goofy shit like that in our generation. Not mine. Are you bugging? So the first mass shooting was in 1966. That's number one. Here we go. Here we go. I said shooting of morals in schools. Okay. What about every example? Okay, well, all right. Well, let's just go to the schools and stuff. Y'all generation going to fucking marathons setting off bombs with, with little marbles and shit in it. That's your generation. We didn't do no goofy shit like that. We was raised. Y'all y'all doing this goofy shit. Y'all doing goofy shit. And why? Because y'all want to be coddled. Y'all want to be loved. So K-12, K-12 school shootings started in 1970. And now... We- there are, more, there are more mass shootings, but not by my generation. We didn't finish school. No, we no, 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 we no, no. It happened in your in your generation. They keep the talk about it. that's your generation. Yes, yes you were two thousand. You 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 late nineties. You are early nineties, baby. Okay. Early nineties, baby. Yeah. So understand this: the 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 shootings that has happened, those come from people that was your age, not our age. Those came from people your age. When I no. say the seventies, we weren't born yet. By the time you, we were born, what? You talking about maybe one, possibly two? You're thinking of the kids now, and that's not my generation. I, it is no. no. Yes, Sandy Hook happened how many years ago? How many years did Sandy Hook happen? Because last time I checked, you were still in school. No, I was not. And Sandy Hook. I was not in school. I was working. I was working for a doctor in Sandy Hook. I mean, in Newtown, where kids go to school in Sandy Hook. Newtown. Yes, I know the Newtown shooting. The Texas shooting. All of those you 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 was out of school. Yes. Nah, man, that's y'all doing it. The Newtown. General, as, as the generations get older, they get softer, and they feel like they gotta prove more and more to each the other. The Newtown. The Sandy Hook um, school shooting was Friday, December 14, 2012. I graduated high school in 2010. Nick, there's still people your age. That's the man. Okay, so, okay. That man wasn't your age? I don't know how old he was. I have no idea how old he was. Yes. The, the, The point I'm trying to make here is, is that it's our fault because we tried to raise you guys not to deal with some of the things that we went through because we thought it was actual trauma. And come to find out it wasn't trauma, it was building character. Some You guys have no character. And that's, I know you. I know you. These people don't know you. These people see that little pretty face, that nice hat, they don't know you. But I know you. So you saying I, I don't have character. No, I know that you, if you had to, you would put hands on a family member. I I would bet my mortgage on well, that. The thing is, though, I've I've there has been you have put your hands on family. I have never members. put my hands on a family member. Never, never, never. And when yes. opportunities have presented itself for me to do so, I x myself out. I'm so, not going to do it. So let me ask you a question. Okay. Which one do you think is worse? You putting your hands on a family member or you having harsh words, harsh, harsh words with family members? Putting my hands on them. No. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm going to read you your rights. I'm going to tell you about yourself. Verbal abuse. Goes it's not abuse. Tell, stay in facts. It's not abuse. Because you don't like those facts, that doesn't make it abuse. Because you don't like to look in the mirror, that doesn't make it abuse. Yes, what y'all, what you, what your generation have to learn how to do is man up, woman up. You know what? 
there's a thing where people try to get dirty. There's a thing where people try so hard not to be like somebody that that's exactly who they turn out to be. And I think that that's what happened with you guys. You guys try so hard not to be these abusers, not to be this type of person, not to cause trauma. And that's exactly the very thing that you did. So you have to learn how to ease up and balance it. So there's a fine line between, oh, I'm never going to be this person, never going to be this person, never going to be this person. And again, if you're mirroring that person as you're saying the words, then doing the work while saying and, and, and truly believing that you don't want to be this person, but you can't just say it. You need to do the work. And that's just what it is. I disagree. Okay. That's why. I disagree. You guys Listen. don't like talking about feelings. Soon somebody Listen. starts saying something y'all don't want to hear, y'all shut down, y'all get defensive, y'all ready to fight, y'all ready to argue. Anything but resolve oh. issues and get to the bottom. Y'all want to talk to We're not going to talk for so this generation, we're not talking for so long. Let's get to these hands. But this once, is that's the problem. Let's get, the problem. Let's get to this. That's that. Let me tell you something. I'm glad you said that. That's how we, you guys raised us, is to, we're not going to be talking. We're going to put hands, right? So I grew up fighting kids, right? Fighting people. Never, I never fought adults. But I grew up fighting. And that's I, a lie. I, I had, you said what? That's a lie, but go ahead. No, you grew up fighting, but you said you didn't fight adults, and I know I never that fought an adult. What adult did I fight? Go ahead, man. What? Go no, ahead, no, man. no, 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 no. Go ahead, me? man. Please enlighten me. Go I ahead. Remember every fight that I had, Go and ahead, it man. always was a tear. Go ahead, man. This, this, this is this is for the people. This is for entertainment. For the people, for the people, and for me. No, what adult ahead. did I fight? Please tell Go me ahead, what adult man. I fought. I'm listening to your story. Go ahead. You mix it me with you got the wrong kid. I never put my hands on another adult. Go ahead, tell the so, story. I grew up, I, I had to fight. That's the way that I was raised. And you ain't gonna do too much arguing. If somebody getting too crazy, they getting in your space, you fight. And if you don't fight, you're gonna come home and you're gonna get tore up because you didn't fight. So, and then you better not lose or you're really gonna get tore up. And then you're gonna have to go, you're gonna, go, you're gonna catch that L from who you fought come home, catch another L, and go back out and fight them again. I ain't got time for all that. So it's like you bred to, like, you got to get it done, right? And then I became an adult, and I'm like, that don't seem like I should just be angry, just fighting and not get into the bottom of stuff. Why Why am I just so angry? Let me figure that out. Yes, you, you, you 31. Wait a minute. Why are these little everyday life things has so much power and control over me that it causes me to be ready to fight all the time. That's not good. I don't want that person to have that much power over me. Yes. I know how to talk. I know how to figure. I know how to get 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 stuff done. Dude. No, because as an adult, you refuse to do. As an adult, you're not trying to get out there and get dirty no more because you didn't already put that work in. I was you know 18 and 19 when I came to this realization. That's well, still, it's not. an adult. It's no, an adult. Just listen. People still fighting. People still 30 and 40 still fighting. Nah, I'm, listen, I'm 50. I ain't trying to put this work in no more. I don't put my work in. You just and said you fought your uncle last week. So do this stuff again. This is disrespectful. Again, it doesn't matter. You still out here doing the same thing not, you was doing when you was. It matters. We, 10, 15, 20, 20, same thing. You're doing the same thing. Week. I say last week. It was last year. But he was Ooh, extremely. Last year, same thing. Big difference. He was extremely disrespectful. Okay. Anybody that's disrespectful to me, me and mine, I'm, I'm putting these hands on. I promise because you, I'm putting these hands on. You have not grown. You don't have no, that growth I have grown. In that category, you're stagnant. You're stuck. Not I'm just not. you. Not just you. So, let me so be let me ready, just you. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I, you think your husband going to sit around and watch somebody disrespect you and not put them hands on them? I know your husband. The thing is this. I know as better. soon as at the first sign of it, he gonna be like, you need to chill out and you need to leave. If it's if it's if it's somewhere where they're they're like at our house or whatever, you can head out. I don't care if you uncle, mother, father, brother, sister, you being disrespectful, you can head out. We try to eliminate it before it escalates to and that you point. You trying to tell me, you trying to tell me if one of your uncles was to say, 
I ain't going nowhere and start calling you all kind of bitches and hoes and sluts and talking mad shit. Can you put hands on him? I'm not going to put my hands on him, but he's still getting the fuck out. If I have to let him know what's, what's packing, you getting out. You either in a body bag. I, I, I'm going I'm I'm to tell you, I'm going to reiterate, and I'm going to tell you why. Men are the protectors of our homes. Mm-hmm. And anytime another man or anybody, female, male man, whatever, come in here in disrespect, I promise you, your husband is a protector. I've met him before. You've met him before. I've met him before. And he's going to protect his family. You're not going to say what you got to say. A, a, a nigga ain't going to be able to say what he want to say to you, Des. Because we as men, not, we're not going to allow it. We're not going to take it. We take it as a as a blatantly disrespectful gesture. Okay. okay. You know what I'm so saying? I so we agree gonna, to we, that. I could agree we to really, that. We're literally really going to take it to these hands. I could agree to that. But that's still. This is when you that's know. Still, you know this is when you know when it's about to go. Oh, you know that? I know. When, when, when your husband or any woman's man look at you and be like, yo, who the fuck is you talking to? It's about to go down. Well, when so I, women, he, he ain't gonna even women, say that. It's, it's, I know, he's he he on it. He's on it. And ain't gonna but be no problem. Again, have, have, you, you might try to talk about it. You might. I'm not you trying to talk about it. For him. He's not doing no talking. I know. He yeah. doesn't even know that it's coming. But I know him, so I know that what he's prepping himself mm-hmm. up for. So you helping my case. My case that I I'm trying to make. I agree with you, but that I have. My point still stands as far as y'all don't like dealing with stuff and, and owning up to y'all, y'all mistakes. Y'all don't like saying sorry. Y'all niggas do not like apologizing. Oh, that's not true. That's yeah. not true. If y'all do not like you know. apologizing. Y'all do not know. This is saying doing this. Let me tell y'all what y'all do. We get into it. Now, like I said, with that breakfast thing, you're going to be like this. You hungry? You want to play? That's your sorry. That ain't sorry. That ain't sorry. That ain't sorry. You need to say, I'm sorry for X, Y, Z. You hungry? You want, you want, you need it. You're not sorry. You're not sorry. You need Ayana to come save your life. <laughs> nah. No, apparently she need to come and save yours. Nah. If me and you get into it, Friday night, mm-hmm. right? We into it, right? Saturday morning, man. In two days, you don't worry about this. That's yesterday and tomorrow. There's nothing you can do about yesterday. We over that. Let's move on. But that's the problem. We're not the whole. We're but not this, over it. This, this was going to happen as a man. This was going to happen as a man. I promise you, this is going to happen. As a man, you might not talk about it Saturday. You might not talk about it Sunday because, you know, things are still hot a little bit. If not hot, it's still lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? But eventually, a nigga going to be like, yo, this is our way of saying sorry. Or this is our way of saying, yo, listen, you know, whatever. We're going to walk up to you and we're going to say, yo, whatever. That shit that happened the other day, yo, that shit can't happen again. And you're going to say, oh, well, it's all your fault. And the real nigga going to look at you like, yo, no matter who fault it was, that shit can't happen again. Right. And in order for it to not happen again, you have to get to the bottom of what caused it and some type of compromise or happy meeting, whatever it is, a meeting point, an agreement point in order for it to not happen. You can't say something can't happen again, but then you don't set stuff up so that it doesn't happen again. It makes no sense. And then doing it over and over and over again, day after day, year after year. Makes no sense. Is it literally the definition of insanity? You're doing the same thing but expecting different results. It's not going to happen. That's not insane because we, we is, done, we're done talking about it. We're done, we but never talk about it. No, 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 no. Arguing and mean. actually talking about it are two different things. If I have a discussion, if if if, if something happens with my wife and I, right? I promise you. I promise you. We might not even discuss what the fuck happened. We just gonna keep it moving. Because we both know whatever happened was wrong. We're gonna keep it moving. I don't know why y'all need 
definitive answer about what happened. Whatever happened was wrong. You don't got to keep so talking about this shit. Let me shit. ask you this. Run your mouth. Then me and you, we get into it. And then I spit in your face. Then a couple weeks go by. I come oh, back. No, these things are coming. I come these over. Things. I come over. Where my plate? The, oh, that happened last week. Mm -hmm. That happened last coming. week. Get over it. No. Before you go. Get over before, it, bro. We ain't talking about it. It happened before, last week. It was wrong. You, it was wrong. It don't matter who was wrong. Get over it. Sis, before you could pucker your lips to bring them back in, I've been putting these hands on you. I mean, let's just so start. Then, let's and, and, and I'm still going to come it. over and then what? And then get over it. I'm yes, going to sit on your couch. Then what? Nothing. Yes, get over let's it. Talk, let's talk about realistic scenarios. But see, this is what I'm saying, though. It doesn't matter. Because guess what? Y'all was out here molesting kids and stuff. And then Ooh. still, oh, give uncle a hug. Give oh. uncle a hug. Let me, you know, not you already. Let me clarify. Not but, you. Yeah, not no, you. like you know about a case I had. No. This shit got thrown out. <laughs> I mean, we're telling no, you a lot. I'm joking. Not you. But there are a lot of people, not in just your generation, baby boomers, whatever, they was out here doing wild stuff, right? And then, God forbid, the child speak up, right? Like, oh, grandpa or whoever, you know, so-and-so did this. Oh, why would you say that? Why would you tell the whole family protecting this predator? Why would you do this? Why would you do that? And now they mad at the, at the, the victim, right? Getting all crazy, not and then, then they don't want to talk about it. And then that person got to pretend like it didn't happen, right? Or be exiled from their family. And then when that person come around, if you don't speak, give that person a hug or whatever, they acting crazy, saying you disrespectful. And that and that let's see and it's a and, lot and, of and, cases like that though, not just not just with the touching and and all that, but it's dramatic. Let me let me tell you this. I understand what you're saying about just, you know, cutting people off because, you know, I'm kind of sort of in that situation right now where you just, you know, you just got to cut people off. I get that. But I'm not, I don't, it's nothing to talk about. It's really nothing to talk about. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> the reason why you're cutting them off is because you're not doing the talking that needs to be done. No, I'm cutting them off because it's either happened one too many times or... I'm just really tired of it. So now, all right, and I'm and I'm also glad you said that. You've been saying a lot of stuff that I'm glad you you bring it up. Now you said that statement there, but you're also the same person that has the stance of, let's say, if it's somebody's mother or somebody's father, and they've had enough and they're tired of going through everything that you just said, they don't have the right to separate and create boundaries to protect their peace and their stress level and their health and everything else just because it's your mother or it's your father. I don't give a All fuck right. who you are. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say this real quick. And you know, we're not getting any all sentimental and everything, but I'm gonna say this real quick. There was a time where my mom and I didn't speak for a year. Right. And now I'm in 2023. Right. And I can't get that year back. So there's a difference in not talking to your mother and not talking to uh your father. There's a difference. All right. If something happens with your mother, straighten that shit out. And I'm gonna tell you what I guess. That's, I, I've never thought I would be that guy. I never thought I would be that guy that be like, cherish the time that you have with your mom. No, you always were before. No, but, that's not now. But no, 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 no. Always, no, no. always. I, would, I never thought I would be that guy to tell you, cherish every minute you can with your mom. You I never did. thought I'd be well, that you guy. Did. Since I was a kid, you've said stuff like that. But I want you to understand this, all right? They used to tell me, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. And, you know, my mom used to tell me, you're going to miss me when I'm gone, right? And I used to look, and, and we, we get this thing in our head like, man, what this heifer talking about? She ain't never leaving. Let me tell you, man, 
January 15, 2023, changed my life. Changed every perception I have of a parent. And I'm telling you, no matter how much you think your parent did you wrong, yeah, work on it. Work on that. I'm not going to hit the cliche and be like, you're going to miss them when they're gone. But I am going to tell you, work on that. It's an empty, it's a, it's a, it's an empty place. Losing your mom can bring you to a dark place. So, losing an aunt or an uncle, that's cool. You always can replace them motherfuckers. But you only get one mom. And I so, respect I respect what you're saying. But at the same token is this. For me, and I'm just speaking from personal experiences and from what I've known of several other people to have gone through, it doesn't matter what the title is. If you're actively continually causing trauma and wreaking havoc on someone's life. The same way how we only get one mother and one father, they only get one of that child. I don't care if they had 50 kids. You only get one of child number one, child number two. It doesn't matter. Respect goes on both sides. You cannot cause all this active trauma and harm and then not want to talk about it, own up to it, go to therapy to get through it, not want to do anything to resolve those issues and then still at the same breath expect someone to continue a relationship with you just because you hold the title of mother or father and i get that you know once they're gone they're gone but if i was to die what is they're gonna have to face the music well, that, that's going yeah. that, that's 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 the shit that's going to be on their mind the same right, shit gonna see, be on yours. i i would be sad if either if i lost any of my parents, but at the end of the day, if I was not communicating with them at the time of their loss or their death, or, you know, I lost five years or however many to- years from not speaking to them before, Watch they yourself. were for valid reasons. And I would not feel like, oh, I should have got that back. I would feel like, dang, I wish we could have worked through this and did not have to lose that time but I don't regret p- protecting my peace and, and, and creating that space for me. Yes. And so I would hope, I would hope, and this goes for anybody that has a turmoil, not great relationship with their parents. I would hope that before either one of them leaves this earth, they're able to resolve that. But I would not say and sit here and say, if it's a lot of toxicity going on and a lot of negative and a lot of, you know, just trauma, Continually, I'm not talking about just past trauma. I'm talking about past, present, future. All is still actively happening. You have to do what you have to do because otherwise they're going to kill you. You're yeah, going to get out and you're going to get killed. It's there's, not a, it. there's a such thing as separating yourself and just detaching yourself. So right. to separate yourself is basically saying, you know what? Enough, enough with you. You still my mom. I'm going to respect you. You still my dad. I'm going to respect you. My words are limited to you. Right. Until, until you, until we could get this shit together. My words are limited. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. What you're talking about is detachment. Well, here's the thing, because the first phase is separating right and then if every time that limited contact that you have is a negative experience because of the again the constant trauma then eventually yeah it will get to detachment if i've been distanced already for five ten years and you still do every, every time like every time it's an issue i would never yes, let detachment, you absolutely like, I would, like yeah. it never happened I, I could walk past you in the street like so, i don't know you period. let me make let me make this very clear to you right as King might say, man, I stand on business. Well, you see what happened to him, so you might want to pick somebody else. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. And I know this 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 little session ain't personal. But let me explain this to you. I would never allow you to detach yourself from your mother. And you know why? 
Not if you have my grace in it. No. I remember I every, grace though. Everything I remember everything that she went through with you. Okay. During the whole pregnancy. Okay. So despite despite, you know, whatever type of person you might think she is or whatever type of person your dad is, I remember what your mom went through with you. Okay. During the whole pregnancy. Okay. And you don't owe her anything. I promise you, you don't owe her anything. That, that was between her and Smurf. They they made a decision that night that they were going to ride each other's chest or whatever <laughs> and not go to the movie. So, you know, you don't owe anybody anything. But, you know, she did a lot. And I know this conversation ain't personal, but she did a lot when she was pregnant with you. Okay. So I, I, you, would, you would never. But what ever, does that have to do if if somebody was pregnant? And, you would never get my grace on that. There are people. There are people that gave birth to their children and are abusing and. Yeah, I swear to God. Stuff to their kids. It has. I, I don't. Understand I swear that. to God. I swear to God on my mother's ashes that I had this conversation. I want to say two weeks ago with somebody. Mm-hmm. And. You know, I was explaining to them the relationship between me and my mom, me and my dad, and they started to explain their, their relationship with their mom and their dad. And they said something to me that kind of hit me. And I, I, remember, I never even thought about it. But this person said to me, she said, Bamboo, sometimes they just did the best that they can do with what they was given. Right. And I was like, elaborate. And she said, most people that cause harm to their children, harm was caused to them as a child. Right. So you, you got to forgive them because they're doing the best with what they had. So this, this, when, she, when she said that to me, it, it, it kind of clicked for me. And I was like, wow. And then I, I sat and thought about all the times a lot of the times that I was going through difficulties with my mom and I start to realize that dang, she was doing her best. I don't disagree with that statement. I absolutely agree with that. You when, can't when, expect somebody to do more than what they have to offer to give. Right. If, a person, get that. if a person is putting in a hundred percent, you you know, when people say, man, give it 110%, that's, that's a stupid percentage. Because all a person humanly has is 100%. If a person's putting in 100%, man, eh, it's whatever to me. Well, here's the thing, though. I still don't have to accept that if you're still actively. So it's like this, right? You're doing things in the way that you feel the best, right? Because you don't know any better, right? And then results are happening. And then your child is coming to you saying, hey, this is an issue, right? Now, most parents from that generation and and back, they don't want to hear, like, you didn't have the space to speak and say how you feel, right? It's what I say goes, and that's it. Don't be telling me about what you think about how you feel about what I had to do, whatever, whatever. So you weren't able to say anything probably until you were an adult, right? So then you're saying, Hey, you know, I don't, I don't like when you call me a jackass or whatever, whatever it may be that happens still to this day that you still don't like. And you say something about it now they're they, or at that point, they might have not known before the, the detrimentalness that it was doing, but now they know, and then they continue to do it because they don't care because they've been doing it. And I, this is how I've been. This is how it's always been. This is how it's going to be. They don't care. Right, so it's not that they again, don't care. It's not that they don't care. But to make the statement of this is how I've been. This is how it's been. This is how it's always going to be. That's a statement of I don't care. So it's saying F your feelings as my child. And what I'm doing to make you feel. Now it, it went from I didn't know any better. So now I know and I still am going to do it anyway. At what point do you take accountability to get better? Like, oh, shoot. I didn't realize I was joking. I thought it was a term of endearment calling him a jackass. I didn't realize how bad that was for him and how it made him feel. Let me do better. But instead of that, like, oh, you know, like, I'm so, it it won't erase what happened and how 
all the things that you had to experience growing up, but from this point forward, we can build something and move forward, right? But a lot of us don't get that. We're still not getting that. We're getting, oh, that too bad, too sad, jackass. That's why I've been calling you jackass. Oh, we love it, jackass. And just, it keeps going. So now it's not that you don't know. You're, you know now and you're choosing to ignore it. And the mm-hmm. only reason why you continue to cause, normally cause hurt and pain to your child is because you don't care. You don't care enough. Let's just say that. You might have some percentage of care, but not enough to move you to want to make change. Yes. There is a such thing as if somebody, if somebody says something to you that you don't like, and I do it all the time, and I mean, I really do. If somebody says something to me that I don't like, there's a way to address people from different generations. Like your generation, I got to come at them real soft. Other generations, I'd be like, hey, who the fuck is you talking to? But I do agree with you as far as, you know, I'm going to address that shit right then and there. But that's something that somebody said to me. So if some, like if somebody calls me, I believe me my first name. I'm not going to say it because then people are going to start to do it. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, yeah, my name is you're not going to abbreviate my shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. If somebody say something to me, I'm like, yo, whoa, whoa, we're not going to do that. That's what we're not going to do. I do I do believe that there's certain things that you have to address right away. But then there is certain things that you just got to let go, man. Yeah, but and the thing gotta... is this. You can't cause trauma and then tell me how to respond to it or how I should manage it. So if if, let's say, for example... As, as as what you said, the nickname thing, right? People abbreviating it and you don't like it. To somebody else, it's that simple, that small. But to you, it's important. So then you're addressing it, right? So then if I then come to you and say, hey, I didn't like, you know, the tone that you have with me or how you said this or whatever, whatever it may be. I didn't like the way you did this. But because it's not important to you, we don't need to address it. You get what I'm saying? Like, it can't just always be on your terms and your turf. When it's important to you, it got to get addressed in the moment. But when it's not important to you, well, we got to let that shit go. It don't work both ways. You can't get both ways. I'm telling you, when you when you when you encounter a, per, a per person like that, where it's just like everything got to be on his or her terms, I'm telling you, the best road to take always is the road right. And just be like, yo, I ain't I ain't got time to argue with ignorant and stubborn people. I don't. Right. And so sometimes those ignorant, stubborn people can be your parents. And it just is what it is. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, sisters, nieces, yeah. nephews. When when people when people insist on doing what they want to do, I don't detach. I slightly separate. And then and when I it get... continues, every time you encounter them, they want to do what they want to do. Eventually, you're going to get tired of that, too. No, it's gonna, it, what's going to happen is it's going to be a natural detachment. Because if every time you're having, if you have a negative experience with the person, naturally, you're going to spread out. So let's say, if, for example, I only talk to you once a month. And every time I talk to you, it's the issue. Now I'm not going to talk to you once a month. I might talk to you once a quarter. And every time I talk to you once a quarter, you still acting up. I might talk to you twice a year. I might talk to you once a year. And then every couple of years. And then eventually you phased out by like natural, natural selection at this point. Yes. After a while, if somebody keeps trying to talk to you in a way that you don't want to be talked to and you starting to ignore that person the way you want to ignore them, eventually a conversation is going to strike up. Eventually, a person is gonna say, "Man, we're not what we we're not what we used to be." And then, hold on, that's the time when you step in and be like, "Yo, man, a certain situation happened, and I tried to address it with you, and you ignored it." So, whenever you're ready to address it like an adult, and unfortunately, it's six months now, but whenever you're ready to address it like an adult, then we can talk. But until then. I'm going to keep doing what I do because it's, I'm I'm actually comfortable with it now. So, but this is what I'm saying. So now you do that and it still happens. This is, this is the point where I think that. You that can't detach yourself from your mother. If you have had that conversation, listen, this is what it is. This is why let's have a conversation. You have a conversation 
And then the next one might be okay. And the one after that might be okay. But then after that is back to the same old, same old. And then it just a pattern that repeats itself. Eventually, I don't oh I don't need to do no more explaining. We already know what time it is. You already have the answer. I don't yeah, have to keep saying you're doing this. All you got, I'm telling you right now, man, silence, silence is the loudest volume ever. But if it ain't working, every time I talk to you, it's the same thing. Man, it's going to work. I'm telling you. So, because okay, people... let me ask you this. How many years would you say that you will go through silence and then trying and then silence and then trying and it's the same thing before you realize this shit ain't working? How it, many all years? On who, it all depends on who it is. I'm asking you now. Tell me what's the depends. longest, whoever, the, the closest relationship, what is the longest time? I told you I, I told you I went a whole year without speaking to okay, my mother. Okay, so you think a year Not is long? So, so, so if somebody Not has been doing it, if somebody has been doing it for 15, 20 years, you wouldn't think that that's excessive? And that they can have enough it's a, at that it's point? A, it's excessive, but I mean... If, if you could go without talking to somebody for 15 or 20 years. No, no, no. I'm saying you're doing okay, this, the right. same song and dance that you're suggesting of not talking. And then you do talk and you try to figure it out. And then the same thing. Then you go from not talking and then the same back and forthness. Yeah, that's at okay. Point, at what point do you say, okay, I just don't need to. You you just go live your life over there. Let me live my life over no. here. First of all, your your mom never gets that kind of treatment. Your mom never gets that kind of treatment. At what point does your any, mom, any relation? Your mom could go off and on. Your dad you, for eternity. You, you're saying for eternity, eternity. No, I could. You're, I could you're saying you're your mom and your dad can cause trauma to no, you no, no, for no, no, eternity. No. Yes, your your brothers and uncles and aunts and them. I'm saying your yeah, mother and your father. You're saying your mother and your father for eternity can cause all kinds of traumas and wreak havoc on your life, and you just supposed to deal with that. Yeah, that's what's yeah, wrong yeah. with the generation right there. Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah. That makes that no makes sense. a lot of sense. So basically, sense. you're saying that your parents can literally kill you, and it's okay because they're your parents. Man, why do you always gotta go to the ex? Because the thing, is this, the thing that you don't realize is that stress literally kills. Stress is the number one cause of death. In the world, you know, yes, you know, you know why people have high blood pressure because of stress, right? When you're stressed, that it causes other ailments to present itself. Yes, you can't do anything stressed out. It depends on the person. It, it does depends. not depend on the person. It, it does not. It doesn't. And that, and but, this, this thought process right here is why they keep doing it because they feel entitled to doing it because mm -hmm. they have the title as mother father so because i'm your mother or your father i can keep causing this trauma and ain't gonna be a damn thing that you could do about it or should do about it because i'm your mother or your father that's toxic you need to go mm -hmm. well, if, if we're if my generation is soft for that i can't speak for us as a whole but yeah, i'm gonna speak for us in the, in the moment well then so be it then i'm soft mm -hmm. and you my soft ass over here and you take your hard ass and you go and, and see how that how far that gets you, you you remember what i told you i think it was our first episode when i told you i said there's a famous i, th I think she's a poet mm -hmm. uh, or anthropist or something like that but she said when people show you who they are believe them Mm -hmm. I told you that. So when people show you who they are and what they want to do, at least you know what you got to work with. You know what I'm saying? At least you know what you're working with. So at least you know, even if it's your mother, if it's your father, at least you know, this is an ignorant motherfucker. And man, right. I'm going to deal with this person a certain way. And so you, know what I'm you can't dictate how I choose to work with your toxicness. If, if I choose to work with it by non-association, then that's my business and that's my prerogative. If I say, you know what, I already know this person is this way. And I already know as soon as I, I can say good morning and it's a, it's a fight about saying good morning, then do you ain't got to worry about me saying no more words. If every word that I say is a, is combative response back, you don't, we don't need to have words. You go live your life because clearly I'm upsetting you so much that we can't have basic conversation. Why would you even want to talk to me at this point? That's Why would I want to talk to you? 
you're, you're in your early 30s. Okay. Once you get, once you get to your early 50s, your late 40s, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll understand that. Majority of this shit the is so small. Get, the older y'all get, the older y'all don't give a fuck. So I'm just not going to give a fuck times 10. Well, I don't know about that. I ain't been giving a fuck when people, since When people 16. get older, when they get older, they give a fuck less. So if I don't, if I'm, like you said, I'm in my early 30s. So by the time I get older and older, I'm really, you really, if you think my mouth is lethal now, y'all going to have to, um... Put me somewhere because I ain't gonna be allowed to, to deal with the general public. Not me. I know. I know how to handle you. I I know exactly. I already know. I know your boundaries. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know your boundaries. Just realize something. You gonna laugh? I did put my hand on one adult. Go ahead. But in my defense, okay. Let me explain the story because y'all y'all might. Oh, no, I know it's the story. Yeah. So, okay, back in 1998, nah, I'm just joking. Okay, this was five years ago, right? Literally, almost five to the day, ago. almost to the day, five years ago. It was New Year's Eve. I'm at my cousin's house. I just had my baby, right? I'm, um, we had, he had like a, a New Year's party. And so my baby is strapped to my chest because I baby wore, right? So um, I'm sitting here minding my business, whatever. So the ball drops, you know how everybody happy new year, whatever, whatever, whatever. Boom. This dude is there that I do not like. He knows that I don't like. We've bumped heads because he tried to do, he tries to use a, 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 a term of endearment that's for a certain family member and only for that family member. And I've made it clear that I don't want to be addressed as such. Right. So he would do things to like, just kind of like poke and poke and poke and poke and poke. So I didn't have anything to do, wouldn't communicate. If he was ever in my space, I just would act like as Casper is in a room at this point. I wouldn't say anything. He would speak or it'll be a group conversation. He chime in. It's like the nigga never said a word. He literally just didn't exist in my world. Everybody thought it was hilarious. I wasn't doing it to be funny, but like, listen, I stand on business. And when I say, I'm not talking. So, okay, boom. So the ball drop, everybody, woo, happy new year, happy new year. This dickhead goes around the room, comes up to lean in. He goes like this, like lean in to 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 give me a hug. Talking about some happy new year. So my daughter is on my she's three months old. She's on my chest sleep. So he knows I don't like him. So I like stiff arm, like to be like, chill. I don't want, I was like, you good, right? Arms, firm arms, I told you good. Bro, he pushes him. He push him up. He push him up. Smash him coming closer. So what he said was, hey, I don't care if you don't want to give me a hug. I'm going to give you a hug anyway. So technically, he assaulted me first. So you know what? I mean, I'm, I got, I'm sitting down. My baby is strapped to my chest. He pushed up with me. So the next best thing I could do, clapped him in his jaw, right? So then, bro goes like this and backs up. <laughs> Or whatever. And I didn't even hit him hard. It was just like a warning tap. That's it. And so somebody saw it, made the announcement to everybody in the room, and it became like this situation because why are you touching me? I already, you you tried it, right? You tried it. You said new year, maybe new her, new leaf, new whatever. I said no, and you came anyway. You lucky that that's all you got. My child was strapped on me. And then you're going to push up on her still squishy head or whatever. If I didn't have my child strapped on me, it would have been a very different ending. That's all I'm going to say. But I, so I did put my hand on an adult. Um, so I am so, I'm proud of you. I'm, you say you I am too? proud of you. I'm proud of you. What? To be honest, that don't count. Like you, it that a predator. Nah, don't touch that, me. Don't touch that, me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. And I'll do it again too. Listen to what I'm telling. No, hey, you don't. Don't. I wouldn't change it. Oh, actually, I would change it. I would change it so that my baby wasn't on me, so that I could have got we man. Listen, I done no. entered the new year. You, a... you know, you know how everybody got workout on their list of losing weight, going to the gym, and exercise. I'm starting out the year strong, baby. Twelve o'clock, getting it in. You're an adult. You're an adult. You touch this adult. This adult is gonna whoop your ass every time. If I say no, it's no. He only got a little tap. I just 
tap them real just a little tap just a little tap yes let me, let me, let me explain this to you once you i'm telling you right now man once you get 50 he gonna get oh, shot at 50 <laughs> You going to jail. <laughs> He's going to jail. You assaulted me first. You assaulted me first. I pushed you off. You proceeded to come. Now I'm fearful of my life. Now you got to get got. You fear for your life. I did. I feel, to be honest, I feared for my child. I didn't want him to squish her head. So let now me, me and my child was in danger. Let me put out a disclaimer that nobody on matter of opinions, nor our staff, condones violence. No, but we, no, do condone, we don't condone bullying and we do condone sticking up for yourself. Absolutely. Somebody put their hands on you. You just these told me, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just told you these know? people that if, if, if somebody touches your child, beat them until you're satisfied. I didn't hey. even touch this man until I was satisfied. I just gave him a warning tap to say, get up off me before you it gets ugly. And now you're saying you that that's a problem? You kind of helped me out. And I'm going to tell you why. He assaulted how, me. How do, think, how do you think you would be feeling right now if you had beaten him till you were satisfied? Oh, it would have felt amazing. <laughs> oh, you see? That's I'm why an I adult. I'm an adult. I'm not going to encourage people to do that. That's why, I, I, that's, why I, I, that's why I tell people, oh, it's an amazing feeling. But to, to be, be honest, smart. it wouldn't, it wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't have taken much. We would have got, it would have been on and popping in there. It would have been on and popping. People, He'd have been talking about that for a long that time. Been, people that have been so nice to subscribe, like, and share. Let me tell you this: it is such a pleasurable feeling when you have beaten someone till you're completely satisfied. Nah. All the animosity. And the hatred that you had for that person is gone. And you know why? Because you have beaten them until you were completely satisfied. You would, you would probably even extend your arm up to help this person up because you have beaten them so you are completely satisfied. Oh, no, but when I tell you subscribers, oh, what a feeling. And just Wait, know that you gotta let them know when somebody on the ground what your your rule is. You always oh, want them. Every, have to let everybody know that everybody already know the rule. That's the whole rule. Somebody going around gotta kick them. What you mean? That's a whole rule. I don't get listen. <laughs> don't knock out with me, cause I'm gonna kick you. Another thing, if you have been able to get the best of me, please beat me till you satisfied. Because I'm coming back for you. Yes. <laughs> you got to beat me again. But if somebody go to the ground, please finish them off by kicking. I promise you. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no other way. Ain't no other feeling more refreshing than leave your boot print on somebody's cheekbone. Yo. That's no, a more refreshing. Some dudes used to, um, after they would fight and they beat somebody up, they would piss on them after. Oh, that's not all Kelly shit. That, I, ain't, I ain't trying to do none of that. First of all, nigga ain't going to catch my dick out on over another nigga. I ain't doing that. Now, I might piss in a cup and pour it on him. But, nigga, I, I mean, man, I ain't pulling out the, I ain't pulling out the heat for that. Absolutely Listen. not. I'm not into to the peeing, to stomping on somebody, spitting on somebody, all that extra stuff. You already caught your L. Like, just go home. There's no rules to the fight. That's it's, there's no. no I'm not saying that it's rules. I'm saying you just said the rule is to kick somebody when they down. But yes. I'm not saying that there's rules. I'm saying what I do. Like we already. I don't like fighting. So if I'm fighting, it's because you did something to me first, and now I'm defending myself. But I'm going to defend myself to a point where you know you better not come try this again because you ain't going to... Listen, you, you're going to want to just be one and done, and then we move on. That's and part so, of being satisfied. No, no, I don't be satisfied. I'm just letting you know you don't, you don't really want a problem. If so you think you had a problem now... You're gonna piss me off even further, and then you really gonna have a problem. And then, so then, and then yeah. they may get beat until I'm satisfied. They ain't got not until I'm satisfied until the police get. Beat. I ain't gonna be satisfied. It's gonna be. Do me a favor. 
A beast. Just one, one quick favor. I'll do it your way one time. You said you'll do it one time? Do it your way one time. The next time somebody come talking to me, oh, I'm going to act like It may not work for you. I've been doing this okay. my whole life. Well, you can't just step into my shoes. Then, All right. If I try it your way, you're paying for my attorney, my legal fees. You're going to pay for my bond to buy me out because I'm telling you. Bond. I'm I pay for your bond. And legal fees. No, 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 no. no. Ain't no um, sense in me and you paying a bond and I have a public defender because then I'm going back in here. No, that's part of me. Do, do me a favor and I promise I you. Both. I will do it. Listen, pay for both and, and we Gucci. Beat the person to, they sat, to your satisfaction. Then And then when they unalive, and, you're going to be like, well, I'm say. You're going to say crying. And you know you're they want you. Crying, baby, you to stop. You're gonna keep going. Yeah, how many times did I fucking tell you to leave me the fuck alone, and you kept going? So now I'm gonna keep going until I'm satisfied. Oh my gosh! But what if it just remind me of when those white people be getting beat up for calling black people nigger, and then the black people go to town, and then they be like, please, please. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm gonna keep going. That wraps us up, subscribers. Of course, once once again, a, n- a nice, lovely episode of Matter of Opinion. Uh, if you got any comments, yes, you got any, I any hear suggestions, from, from the viewers. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your from you. On these generational curses, do you agree with what I'm saying that like we should talk about it, get through them, so we can have these happy, healthy relationships, or do you agree with bamboo as far as you just don't say anything, get over it, move on? Well, no, I'm not gonna let you do it like that. I'm not gonna let you do it like that. That's, that's not what I said. What I said. Mm-hmm. Some things are not worth arguing over, so you just let it go. That's it. That's how I said. We're not it. talking about the little things, and you don't get to decide what level of trauma you caused on me. Subscribers, let let us what know you how you feel. Let us know what you think in the comments below, right? And I promise you, we will address. Every comment that we get based on our shows, because again, you're part of the show with us. We're doing this for you. You know what I mean? So until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget, tell a friend to tell a friend. You know what I mean? And as always, this is your boy Bamboo signing out. It's That's your girl, Bess. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And we out of here.